part of it. Um, basically, it was, the goal of it was to get people in the Bible and uh, to apply the Bible each to our individual lives. The Bible is practical. It is applicable, and uh, it works for all of us if we use it. Kim? I have something to say also. I have a really hard time at my job because my boss sometimes puts me in situations that are um, would make me either lie or tell the truth and get in trouble either way. And I've really been struggling with that. And I've thought about it a lot this past week. And I can't change him. The only thing I can do is be the best Christian and the best person that I can be and be an example and hopefully um, work through it that way. So I, you know, really asked the Lord this week to really help me with not trying to change him or conform myself to whatever was happening at that moment, but just to help me be the best person I could be. Good. Well, this week's lesson is our final uh, lesson in our 10 Keys to Spiritual Success, Sailing Successfully Through Life's Storms. And uh, our passage today is 2 Peter chapter 3. 2 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Actually, that's 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 3 through 9. Yeah, it's 1 Peter. It's wrong on the notes there. Scratch it through. That's 1 Peter 1 or 1 Peter 3? 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Um, the teens are probably going to be quite confused next door. I hope not. I suspect Pastor Price knows the passages quite well enough to... Keep on be able to sail his way through there, but in your notes, scratch out the, fortunately it's a Roman numeral, so you just have to scratch out the extra capital letter I there, and you have 1 Peter. Yeah, it's 1 Peter. Not 2 Peter, 1 Peter, chapter 1, verses 3-9. through nine. The Bible says, Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, which according as to his abundant mercy hath begotten us again unto a lively hope, by the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance un incorruptible and undefiled, and that fadeth not away, reserved in heaven for you, who are kept by the power of God through faith unto salvation, ready to be revealed in the last time. Wherein ye greatly rejoice, though now for a season, if need be, ye are in heaviness through manifold temptations, that the trial of your faith, being much more precious than gold that perisheth, though it be tried with fire, might be found unto praise and honor and glory at the appearing of Jesus Christ, whom having not seen ye love, and whom, though now ye see him not, yet believing, ye rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory, receiving the end of your faith, even the salvation of your souls. Let's pray. Dear God, please bless us we study your word about um, what your Bible has to say about us getting through the hard times of our lives. Help us not to just uh, get through hard times with a bitter spirit or just to barely survive through them, but to thrive through them and to be a witness to others and a blessing and a ministry to those through them and to learn from them the things that you would have us to learn. In Jesus' name, amen. What we see here, Roman numeral one, general causes of the trials of life. And uh, capital letter A is sin. The Bible says in Romans chapter 5, verse 12, Wherefore, as by one man sin entered in the world, and so that death by sin, so that death passed upon all men, for that all have sinned. And uh, about sin, the general consequences of a sinful world is uh, that bad things happen to people. And that's just something people need to understand is that there will be hard times on this earth. And it's because Adam and Eve sinned against God is the basic most utmost general cause of anything bad going is that uh, there's sin in the world. and uh, But things go way deeper than that, and things go way beyond that. But understand that uh, at the most base human level, if you will, to quote Peter, the bad things which happen to us, we deserve them because we're sinners. But um, God has more than just that in it for us, understand. But understand that uh, nothing ever happens to us that we don't deserve. We deserve far worse. God has given to us far less than what we deserve, and uh, he has better plans for us than just to suffer. However, 
understand that everyone will die someday. People ask, well, why did so-and-so die? I've seen this happen in the hospital. Someone's grandmother who's 85 years old dies, and people are in the hallway bawling and asking, why did grandma die? And I don't mean to belittle it, but honestly, the truth is, is everyone is going to die someday. And um, the truth is, we're all going to die. Understand that death is a part of this life, and it happens as a result of our sin. And uh, as Peter likes to say, everything burns. There's nothing in this life that uh, is going to last forever. There's nothing we can hold too dear. So understand the general consequences of a sinful world is that things don't go perfectly. And that's something everyone needs to understand and have as their basic backup mindset is that they shouldn't expect things to go perfectly. Now, understand also about sin is there are specific personal consequences to specific personal sin. Um, capital R, I'm sorry, uh, small letter A is chastisement from God for sins. In Hebrews chapter 12, verses 5 through 6. And uh, Sam, could you read that for us, please? Hebrews 12, 5 through 6. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaketh unto you as children. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. We as believers, when we sin, there are consequences for our sins. And I would have to say a very significant number of the trials believers go through are, as, are a result of of their wrongdoing. When we break the law, we get in trouble with the law, and God often sends the law, if you will, as a reminder to believers to not break the law, to not be scoff laws. God uses the arm of the law to rein in even un, even misbehaving believers. Um, God uses many different consequences. Sometimes a believer who sins uh, falls ill. The Bible talks about a, about Believers disregarding the Lord's Supper, it says, and many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. The Corinthian believers had been disregarding and taking very lightly the Lord's Supper, and God sent his chastisement, illness, and even death in that church as a result of their uh, taking the Lord's Supper flippantly. Um, consequences always come as a result of sin, but God uses them to try to bring us closer to him. When we as God's children stray from him, God uses punishment as a loving father. It says, um, For whom the Lord loveth, he chasteneth, and scourgeth every son whom he receiveth. God uses chastisement to direct his children. Just like a loving parent, if their child tried to put a screwdriver inside a, um, inside a wall outlet, their dad might smack their hand for it. And so our Heavenly Father prevents us from sin or uh, punishes us for our sin, uh, for our own good. It's for our good, it's, it's for our benefit. And uh, we also see in Galatians chapter 6, verse 7 through 8, the law of sowing and reaping. And we as believers, we do receive consequences for our sins. Galatians chapter 6, the Bible says, Be not deceived, God is not mocked, for whatsoever man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption, but he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. So we as believers, when we do wrong, there will be consequences. It's the law of sowing and reaping, there will be consequences. God punishes uh, disobedient believers to get them back in the way of service and to protect them from hurting themselves even worse in the future. Now notice, not every trial is a result of sin, but every sin will result in things being worse than if one had done right. If we as believers will just trust God and do right, things will always turn out well for us. If we decide to take the matters into our own hands and live our life our own way, uh, we will be judged by God for it and God will have to punish us for our disobedience. But not every trial is a result of sin. 
Trials also can be for the purpose of purification.